This is the first episode in a series of instructional videos about Unreal Engine 5 for industrial application development, including architecture modeling, warehousing, manufacturing and assembly line simulations, robotics, product configurators, inventory management, just to name a few. This series is meant for experienced C++ programmers who are new to game programming and especially Unreal Engine, but have working experience in object-oriented concepts. With a very few exceptions, when watching the 40 or so Unreal Engine videos, even when the instructor was using C++, I had the feeling that the instructor himself doesn't really understand the fundamentals of how Unreal Engine was architected. I am an experienced C++ programmer. I worked in real-time C++ application development projects for a number of years using object-oriented design methodologies like Room as well as UML for real-time. With this background, I spent quite some time to understand how the system is architected. Instead of watching hours of click around videos to build game terrains, first I wanted to understand the entire picture before going into the daunting details. This sample application is based on the 2017 Unreal Engine tutorial published on Ray Wenderlich by Tommy Tran. Installation of Epic Games and Unreal Engine 5 is not covered in this video, however. Okay then, let's start Epic Games Launcher and open Unreal Engine 5, then Create a project Banana Turntable 5 and select blank C++ and no starter content. Always select C++ even when you are not sure if you will ever create a C++ class. Making blueprint classes is always available. What is open here is the game editor, which is a kind of integrated development environment for building your game world. Basically, making a game application means that you are building the game scenes. A scene is also known as level, map or world. All these terms are used interchangeably. You can regard scenes as screens from traditional applications, but instead of using text fields, buttons, checkboxes, data tables and other similar user interface widgets, you populate the scene with game objects like terrain, characters, buildings, light sources, audio. However, Traditional user interface widgets can also be used too, since Unreal Engine has a UI kit, which could be very important for industrial application or even for games too. The most obvious part of the editor is the viewport. Typically, a viewport displays a scene, but viewports are used in other varieties of editors too. We will learn a couple of them in this video. Navigating the editor viewport is tricky and you should have to spend some time to practice. You click left, middle or right mouse button and move the cursor to reposition or rotate the viewport camera. You use the mouse control wheel to zoom in out. When pressing the ALT key along with the left mouse button, it gives another way of navigation. I use this a lot. While pressing the SHIFT key when moving an object up and down with the translate arrows, it moves the viewport camera along with the game object being repositioned. While pressing any of the three mouse buttons, 
QWEASD keys move the camera to down, forward, up, left, back, and right, respectively. Just pressing W, E, or R key without a mouse button will select the translation, the mover, rotator, and scalar resizer tool, respectively. Keep in mind that navigation in play mode is significantly different from editor viewport navigation. In play mode, the QWEASD buttons work without the mouse buttons and move the player camera down, forward, up, left, back and right. The mouse in play mode with or without buttons rotate and tilts the player camera. The mouse scroll wheel has no effect in play mode. All of these can be changed in the game programmatically, but these are the typical operations and it's better keep them as is, since they are traditional in gameplay. When the game scene viewport is opened, a photorealistic 3D landscape is displayed, which is a key feature of Unreal Engine. I am not interested in games at all, but the technology provided by Unreal Engine is so excellent for real-time simulation applications to model machinery, assembly lines, manufacturing, robotics, and the number of other industrial applications as explained earlier. For these applications, photorealistic visualization is not a must, but why not use it when practically freely available in the engine? Another important motivation factor is that C++ is the de facto standard in real-time applications, and Unreal Engine is all about C++. I won't start working with C++ in the first video. First, I'd like to explain the most important game engine concepts in the context of the object-oriented paradigm, which is so fundamental in understanding how Unreal Engine works. As a matter of fact, exactly the same concepts are applicable for Unity, the other major game development engine too. So, if you learn either of them, you will understand the other right away. To add game objects into the scene, you need assets. C++ classes are assets too. Assets are available via the content browser, and typically you can drag and drop them onto the game, scene, map, level, word, whatever name you use. What kind of assets are available for building a game? I have downloaded Banana Model FBX and Banana Texture JPEG from the link provided in the Travis Tran tutorial. What is then FBX? It is a kind of abbreviation of film box from Autodesk for storing 3D models. When we open an FBX with Windows 3D Viewer, we can review the shape of the model and check out the number of triangles and vertices. This is called a mesh or a static mesh, and they are fundamental for game engines. 3D simulations and visualizations. The traditional meaning of the word mesh is more or less the same as the words net or web. Mesh refers to the net-like texture look of the shape that depicts the outer surface and geometry of the 3D model. Static mesh means that the structure, the shape of the 3D model, is not altered during the game. Its position, rotation and size can be modified, but not the model itself. Resizability is crucial, and that's why the vector graph nature of these meshes are so indispensable. 
Unreal Engine is primarily a consumer of these FBXs, meshes, 3D models. However, since version 4.24, you can build models within Unreal Engine itself. You can even export these models from Unreal Engine as FBX. Despite the built-in 3D modeling capability of Unreal Engine, the free Blender 3D model creation software is regarded a preferred tool to create 3D models and export them as FBX. Why am I talking about meshes? None of the beginner game programming videos and courses explain what is FBX, what is a mesh, what are these 3D models. These are not widely known technologies outside of this game development 3D modeling world and every newcomer should understand them. Now, in Unreal Engine Editor, Import this banana model FBX using the content browser menu Import. In the FBX import options, don't create the material. It makes no harm, but not necessary for us, since we are going to create our own material from the banana skin. Now that we have the static mesh asset, we can drop the banana model as many times as we want onto the game scene, the map. Its shape is banana, but its color is not yellow, since we haven't defined material and texture for the 3D model. The 3D model is just a shape. When a static mesh is dropped onto the scene, actually a static mesh actor object a class instance is created. The reason is that assets cannot be added directly to the scene. An actor is required. Static Mesh Actor is a utility class devised for this purpose to make adding meshes easily onto the level. In Unreal Engine everything is an object and objects are derived from classes. Since this course was meant for experienced C++ and OO programmers, I don't need to explain what classes are. Everything you drop onto the scene is a class instance that is an object. All these classes must be derived, inherited from the actor BS class. Hence, game objects in Unreal Engine are called actors. Unreal Engine has a sophisticated, still very easy to use C++ class library, a framework. You work 99% with these classes and the object instantiated from them. These classes provide runtime reflection as well as automated memory management. You will never use new and delete operators. You will not work with standard template library STL classes either. You simply don't need them. Unreal Engine C++ framework provides all features and tools. You will use template syntax sporadically and some of the recent C++ keywords like override always, but you don't necessarily have to be a template class creator wizard to do Unreal Engine C++ programming. A game in Unreal Engine is a collection of collaborating C++ objects. The Unreal Engine framework supports properties which provide a runtime reflection. For example, an object can have a name and you can rename these objects on the world outliner. These properties are actually object instance variables, data members, and they have default values. And these values can be changed for a selected object in the editor on the details panel. For example, the location of an actor is represented with three float values called f vector. 
Similarly, the rotation and scale properties are of type F vectors too. You can create your own classes, which are derived directly or indirectly from the actor ancestor class, and you can add your own custom properties. We will cover all these details later. The objects you are creating in the editor are manually instantiated, but you can create hundreds, thousands of actor objects during the game programmatically too. Now, we need a yellow skin onto our bananas. And for that goal, import banana texture JPEG and Unreal Engine automatically creates a texture asset for that JPEG. You cannot use a texture asset directly in a model in static mesh. First, you have to make a material asset. Create then banana material from banana texture. Add material with the menu of the content browser. The material editor has a viewport too, which is used to give a visual clue how that material would look like if it were applied on a sphere static mesh model. The graph panel is a ubiquitous feature in Unreal Engine Editor, it is called Blueprint. A blueprint is a graph with nodes and lines and is a symbolism for programming application logic algorithms. If you have ever worked with object-oriented design, UML, blueprints have exactly the same idea as activity diagrams. Unreal Engine is a C++ engine. Still, blueprints are commonly used along with C++ classes and they are really convenient for a number of tasks. So then, add texture sample expression from the palette in the material editor. Select banana texture material expression for the texture sample node on the details panel. Then connect texture sample the RGB outbound connector to banana material result node base color inbound connector. So, from programmer's perspective, this blueprint graph corresponds to something like set base color value of the banana material to the texture sample expression with an input of banana texture asset. It is really a great question if this way of defining logic is meaningfully practical or not. Anyway, it is how Epic Games engineers invented it and honestly it looks cool and innovative. Have a look now how the JPEG image is stretched on the surface of the sphere. Clearly, this image was created specifically in a way to perfectly match the surface of the banana mesh 3D model. This is not a generic symmetric texture that would fit on any mesh 3D model surface. Now that we have the banana material, open the banana model imported from FBX and select banana material as a material for the model. Note that the three instances on the game map are painted yellow immediately. Now let's bring life to this scene and create our own class, Turntable with Banana BP. And instead of C++, for now, let's use Blueprint 
hence the BP suffix in the name. Select Add Blueprint in the Content Browser menu. From the list of classes, we have to select a parent class. The three main classes are Actor, Pawn and Character. As explained earlier, only actor objects can be instantiated on a game scene. Pawn, the chess piece, is an actor with user input, and character is a pawn with human or animal-like movement characteristics. Our actor could even be derived from static mesh actor, if you open the All Classes option, but it wouldn't be practical since a static mesh actor was devised specifically for a single mesh actor and our actor will be composed of multiple components, multiple meshes. So, select Actor as the parent class and the Blueprint Editor is shown, which has the typical panels of Viewport to show the visual representation of the actor, Graph Panel where the behavior of the actor is defined with the Blueprint symbolism, Components showing the hierarchy of the components making the actor, and the Details Panel which shows the properties of the selected component. In the Components panel, a default scene root component is visible. Here, scene refers to a map level world. This component has no visual representation. It is not a static mesh. What is actually a component then, and how they are related to actors? An actor by default has no behavior, has no visual representation. The components give body and life to the actors. An actor can be purely functional without visual representation, without a body. Similarly, an actor, like the static mesh actor, can be data only, without behavior. An actor is like a car. A car in itself is nothing, it's just a concept. It exists because of the components it is made of. The wheels, the trunk, the motor, and the myriads of other parts. The root scene component represents the actor's location and rotation on the scene map world level. When you want to move an actor, or a car for example, its root component is to be relocated. Then it will relocate all subcomponents accordingly. Before adding components with visuals, close the Blueprint Editor and drop Turntable with Banana BP onto the scene a couple of times. The editor adds some arbitrary temporary visual representation to the object. But when you actually start the game, nothing is shown on the scene. An actor in itself has no visual representation. Actors, for pure game simulation logic, are perfectly fine without visuals. Then open again the Blueprint Editor and add some physical shape to the actor. Add a cylinder component below the root component with the name Turntable and resize it to make it look like a turntable. Keep the location at the zero position. 
then add a static mesh component under default scene root with the name banana and select banana model as the mesh asset on the details panel. The default scene root is the parent of both the cylinder and the banana. When you want to turn the actor, turn the root. Adjust the Z position of the banana. This is a very important concept. The coordinate is relative to the position of the root component. When the object is placed at a specific location of the scene, the root inherits that world location coordinates and the banana position will be adjusted relative to that root coordinates. For the sake of fun, let me add another static mesh named another banana with the banana model and rotate it facing the other banana. This way we have an actor with a composition of three components. Before adding motion in the event graph, place another two instances of this blueprint class onto the scene. When we build a game, we are creating game objects, actor instances, from actor classes. A game engine with its framework is a brilliant example of object-oriented programming with all characteristics such as classes, objects, class instances, class hierarchies, inheritance, methods, functions with data properties for encapsulation, internal, protected, and public. Override virtual functions for polymorphism, abstraction, composition of behavior and structure with components, and components themselves are instances of classes too. These object-oriented characteristics are fundamental part of the engine itself. The engine was built with C++, the number one programming language for so many long years. If you don't know the object-oriented paradigm, it's almost impossible to understand the engine itself. Now, eventually, <laughs> add some behavior to our actor. Open again the Blueprint Editor, right-click on the graph and add a function, Add Local Rotation. The editor has shown four possibilities of the Add Local Rotation function call, since all components have this function implemented. Select the version with default scene root. Add 1 as the Z value parameter, which means rotating around the Z axis. The target of the function call in this case is the default scene root component. The blueprint term is node for a function invocation call. If you ever worked with object-oriented modeling, UML, you will recognize immediately that blueprints are exactly the same concept as activity diagrams. Now, connect the event tick to the execution point of add local rotation function. Event tick is a very important fundamental part of game engine machinery as well as real-time simulations. EventTick provides the timeliness of the game. Every game object will have a tick, unless explicitly disabled for performance reason. For example, static mesh actors will not receive ticks since they are stationary forever. In regular non-gaming application, Ticks are not available by default 
you have to elaborate your own timing machinery in a game engine like in Unreal Engine, ticks are readily available for the application developer. How many ticks per second? It depends on the computer you are using. On the game viewport, you can show FPS frames per second. Start the game and all turntables with the bananas are rotating nicely. So, this concluded the first video, where we have explained static meshes, FBX, models, textures, materials, actor classes and game objects, components, a scene, map, level, world, and an object-oriented concepts related to all these. We have created our own actor class using blueprint symbolism, and finally, we explain the fundamental even tick machinery in game engines.